So whenever I think about cooking, I almost instantly think about something to do with heat. Whether it's simmering a hearty vegetable stew, whipping up a demi-glace or a bechamel sauce, or searing a steak over high heat. All of those things are definitely cooking, right? But what about situations where we don't have heat? If we're not simmering, stewing or braising something, can what we're doing still technically be called cooking? In other words, can you cook without heat? Yes, you absolutely can cook without heat. And I don't just mean mixing together ingredients to make a salad or a sandwich, no. What I mean is taking one or more ingredients and permanently changing them. Like searing a steak, for example. Once you've cooked a steak, well, that's it. You can't uncook it, right? The proteins have been changed forever. But heat isn't the only way to permanently change ingredients. So certain microorganisms can eat carbohydrates and they convert these carbohydrates into other things like acid or alcohol. And this process, which we call fermentation, is how loads of common foods are made. For example, you can ferment cabbage to make sauerkraut or kimchi. You can ferment soybeans to make soy sauce, miso or tempeh. And milk can be fermented to make yogurt, which is surely one of the most popular foods on the market. And actually, yogurt's pretty easy to make as well. So milk contains a specific sort of sugar called lactose, right? And sugar is of course a carbohydrate. So when specific strains of bacteria are added to milk, this bacteria consumes the lactose and converts it into something called lactic acid. And that's basically all you have to do to make yogurt. After about eight hours, the bacteria will have finished converting all the lactose into lactic acid and the yogurt will be ready. I've done a whole separate video explaining how yogurt's made. There's a link for that in the description if you're interested in learning more. In any case, although you don't need the sort of heat that you'd use to say cook a steak to do fermentation, most foods do require a certain degree of temperature control for fermentation to actually happen. Some foods like kimchi only ferment in cool temperatures, whereas other foods like yogurt require warm temperatures to ferment. But there are other ways you can cook where temperature just isn't a fact there. A few days ago I was having a chat with a friend who's currently traveling around South America and he told me about this Peruvian dish that he tried called ceviche. Ceviche is kind of like a fish salad but the interesting thing is that the fish isn't cooked over heat. It's actually cooked using the acid from a lemon or a lime. Let me explain. So whenever you cook meat or fish with heat, it turns opaque and it turns quite firm, right? This is how that works, okay? So the raw proteins that you'll find in raw meat or fish are complex three-dimensional shapes, okay? And we call these raw proteins folded. Folded proteins are really hard for our bodies to actually consume. Our digestive systems have to work extra hard to actually unfold these raw proteins so that we can actually absorb the nutrients from them. The problem is that this unfolding process wastes our energy and actually means we get less energy from the food that we eat. But we can actually unfold these proteins before we eat them by applying heat. In other words, if we cook them, they're easier for our bodies to absorb. So when we eat cooked proteins, our bodies absorb it a lot more easily and we also get more nutrition from it. And there are loads of people who actually believe that this ability for us to cook food is what helped us to evolve into the humans that we are today. This process of unfolding proteins, whether in your stomach or whether by heat, is called denaturing. You can see very clearly when a protein's been denatured because, as I said before, it'll turn opaque and firm. Right? But heat isn't the only way to denature protein. Acid can also denature protein. In the case of ceviche, you actually cook the fish with the juice of a lemon or a lime instead of using heat. And ceviche is so healthy and so easy to make. If you want to make it, just find the freshest ocean fish that you can. Two decent sized fillets, about 200 grams per person. Sea bass is always a good choice, but haddock or halibut would also work pretty well. Ask the fishmonger to take the skin off and dice it into bite sized pieces, or just do it yourself. Toss the fish with some diced onion, minced chili, chopped fresh herbs, minced garlic, the juice of two lemons, a little bit of salt, and a dash of extra virgin olive oil. Let that sit for about five minutes, giving it an occasional stir. Once it's ready, season it with a bit more salt and pepper to taste and serve immediately. As the mixture sits there, the lemon juice will actually continue to cook the fish. If you leave it for too long, the texture will turn firm and choggy. It's best, to be honest, to eat this within 15 minutes. Anyway, back to the science. So any protein can be denatured, whether it's from meat, fish, eggs, or vegetables. With that in mind, you might be wondering, could you cook, say, a steak with lime juice? Technically, yes, you could use a lemon or a lime to denature the protein of a steak, but it might not be a steak that you'll actually want to eat. The thing is, cooking with heat does more than just denature the protein. Unlike heat, acid can't actually kill harmful bacteria. And not only will acid cooked steak be potentially dangerous, it's probably not going to taste fantastic either. Lemon juice, unlike heat, 
can't trigger certain chemical reactions that only happen at high temperatures, like caramelization and the Maillard reaction. We generally call this browning. And browning is the reason that a perfectly seared steak tastes so good. So yes, you could technically cook a steak with lemon or lime juice, but it wouldn't be a steak you'd want to eat. And you'll probably have your head in the toilet bowl for a little while as well. <coughs> But there is another way you can cook meat or fish without heat. All you need is time and a load of salt. The process is pretty straightforward. Big chunks of meat are coated in ridiculous amounts of salt and left in a cool place to age for a while. And when I say ridiculous amounts of salt, I mean ridiculous. I mean, I'm getting high blood pressure just watching this clip. This process of cooking the meat with salt is known as curing. And it's how loads of common foods like salami, ham, and beef jerky are made. Sometimes cured meat is also smoked to give it that smoky flavor and to also kill off any extra bacteria. But other than that, cured meat is not cooked with heat at all. Instead, it's actually the salt that does all the work. Just like heat and acid, salt also denatures protein, turning it opaque and firm. But the main purpose of salt in curing is to dehydrate the meat. Salt actually draws out moisture from the meat in a process called osmosis. And osmosis has two major benefits. First, unlike acid, salt can actually produce meat that is safe to eat straight away. Bacteria needs a moist environment to survive, right? And the salt actually draws out the moisture and in the process kills off any harmful bacteria. And that's the second benefit. Because the salt's now created a really dry environment, bacteria can't develop as much. And so salt actually helps to preserve the meat for longer, which means that cured meat generally lasts a lot longer than fresh meat. That's why bacon, for example, lasts a lot longer in your fridge than say a fresh chicken breast. But it's important to note that not all cured meats can be ate without being cooked. You need to cook bacon, for example, right? And that's because bacon's only cured briefly. Meats that have been cured for a long time, you don't need to heat up. But if the meat's only been cured for a little while, you'll probably still need to cook it. But why limit yourself to cool temperatures? You can even go a step further and use the freezer as a cooking tool. So when food gets frozen, ice crystals form inside of the food and actually rupture the cells of whatever food it is. This basically changes the texture and actually makes the food softer. If you've ever tried to freeze a banana and then defrost it, you'll know exactly what I mean. Fresh bananas are quite firm, right? But after a few days in the freezer, the texture turns kind of smudgy. But this can be used to your advantage. You can actually freeze vegetables before you cook them so that they cook faster and have a more tender texture. This works great for starchy vegetables like potatoes. Though in this case, you're not tender cooking the food in the freezer you still need to actually use heat to finish the job right I couldn't just eat this sweet potato now but in northeast China people do use just the freezer to cook food one thing they do this with is pears so I defrosted and thawed the pear on the right here three or four times I'm guessing that as it froze the ice crystals formed like I explained before and it just ruptured the fruit cells and now it kind of looks like a burst water balloon right the texture has been utterly and permanently transformed it might not look that appealing but this thawed texture would work much better if it was going to be blended into ice creams or smoothies or something like that. And believe it or not, it does taste pretty good on its own as well. Speaking of the freezer, what about dishes that are meant to be prepared and served cold? Can we really only call the process cooking if heat is involved? If a sushi master spends their entire day elegantly preparing vegetables and raw fish, can we actually only give them the title of chef just because they've used heat to cook the sushi rice. I mean, surely not. Rice is the easiest part of the whole experience. And what about straight up raw dishes like beef tartare, gazpacho, and yeah, even salads and sandwiches. Does the chef who made these dishes not qualify as a chef just because they didn't use heat? No, that would be ridiculous, surely. But let's not get bogged down in semantics. There's so many definitions of cooking. Some mention heat, others don't, but it hardly matters in real life. You're not gonna go into a restaurant's kitchen and be like, hey guys, look, this guy isn't even using heat. You're a phony. Hey, this guy's a great big phony! No, come on. Cooking is about a lot more than just heat, isn't it? I mean, sure, heat and temperature control are important tools in the kitchen, but there are loads of situations where you don't need either, right? Between veg prep, fermentation, curing, and all the other things I've talked about here, heat and temperature control are just another two tools in your cooking arsenal.